Uh, anyway, there's a lot of text you can also read about this. Uh, see if I can pull up one real quick. The uh, moon and star, by the way, uh, this was used to unite all the tribes on... It's a ring, basically. And it used to... Uh, he Nerevar united all the uh, the Ashlanders and everybody who lived here against the Dwemer here, you know. He really... He was the, the one of the... Uh, the generals that you know did the war against the women. You know, let me let me pull up some pictures for you while we're talking about this because um, there's a lot of really cool imagery here. Uh, Morrowind battle at Red Mountain. It's a little little low resolution picture, but you get the idea here. <laughs> That's the women on the right. See if I can get up a little bit better picture here. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, this is this is the battle at, at Red Mountain, right? Um, and uh, there's some conflicting story stuff here. Uh, and I know if that's part of the game or it's just intentionally misleading because of different accounts in the game. But uh, one thing that's interesting, and I brought this up on the last stream where I was just flubbing everything up, but you know what? I think, I think I'm going to read an excerpt of the actual game here instead, instead of just showing you. Conjure some imagination instead of just like downright showing. Uh, but anyway, let's see if I can find this uh, one particular book. I think it's Progress of Truth. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the Divinity of the Tribunal. Temple Doctrine claims that the apotheosis was miraculously achieved through questing, virtue, knowledge, testing, and battling with evil. So they're, they're not saying, well, they're not letting the public, yeah, we basically cheated a godhood. They're just like, yeah, we, we did it with knowledge. We, we were so good with it. Temple Doctrine claims the divine powers and immortality are ultimately conferred as a communal judgment by the Dunmer ancestors, including, among others, the good Daedra, the prophet Veloth, and Saint Nerevar. This and his priests ask whatever Dagoth Earth, Earth's powers and tribunal's powers might ultimately derive from the same source, Red Mountain. Source in the Apocrypha, this suggests that the tribunal relied on profanely enchanted tools to achieve Godhead, and that those unholy devices were the ones originally created by the ungodly Dwemer sorcerer, Kagranak, to create the false construct Numidium. See if I can uh, find something else here. Uh, here we go. The distant priests say that the temple has always maintained a public face, represented by by the hierograph. Hierograph? Is that how you said? The public, the priestly writings, and a hidden face, represented by the apocrypha. The hidden writings. The public accounts of the portra the public account portrays the actions of the tribunal in a heroic light, while the hidden writings reveal secrets. Untruths, inconsistencies, conflicting accounts, and varying interpretations, which hint at a darker and less heroic motives and actions of the tri tri tribunes. That's how we say that. Tribunes and tri tribunal. There we go. In particular, conflicting accounts of the Battle of Red Mountain raised questions about the tribunal's conduct and about the source of their subsequent apotheosis. Also, there's good evidence that the tribunal had been concealing the true nature of the threat posed by Dagothur at Red Mountain, misleading the people about the tribunal's ability to protect Morrowind from Dagothur, and concealing a recent dramatic diminishing of the tribunal's magic powers. Here's the thing. The, uh, the tribunal... Uh, this was a while ago, and I think they have also kind of lost their minds a little bit. And they initially lost their minds too, because this power was so uh, tempting. And I'll try to uh, go into this new, but uh, here we go. Temple accounts of the Battle of Red Mountain. Because again, this war was waged between, you know, the Dwemer and the Dunmer. Anyway, Ashland's tradition does not place the tribunal at Red Mountain and holds that the Dwemer destroyed themselves rather than the Nerevar destroyed them. Ashland's tradition further holds that Nerevar left Dagotha regarding the profane secrets of Red Mountain, while Nerevar went to confer with the Grand Council, i.e. the Tribunal. That Nerevar died at the conference, not of his wounds, according to the Ashlanders, but from treachery. And that subsequently, the Tribunal confronted the defiant Dagoth Ur within Red Mountain, then drove Dagoth Ur beneath Red Mountain when he would not yield at their will. So, here's another thing I want to bring up. Now, I don't know if this if this exactly what it is. I might be wrong about this, and I'm sure some someone better at the lore can describe this. But, uh... They, uh... They fucking killed him. They killed him. There's Vivek stabbing Nerevar. <laughs> Alma Alexia on the right there. And uh, Sotha Sil here on the left. Ripping off his face. His face was also the uh, the ground basis for the Ordinator's face. If you take a look at the bottom left, the guy who's stuck in the uh, in the ground, that's Dagoth Ur. This is basically them just being so corrupted by their, their god powers that they're like, well shit, let's just, let's just make no claim of anything. Let's just be gods. And I believe Nerevar did not 
agree with that and that's why he went but some some conflicting things that he did not be, get betrayed i don't remember but uh yeah uh they also cut off his feet too pretty sure it was just al malexo who killed him but the rest just went along with it but yeah they cut off his feet as well but anyway again if i get this wrong please correct me on this i i'm not a hundred percent knowledgeable on everything that's going on here you know <laughs> you're you're speaking some real heresy right now the tribunal will not be pleased anyway uh you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of you know the Ashlanders here on Morrowind. They all want a new Nerevar. I'm not the first one, but basically when Nerevar comes back, he's gonna drive drive off all the the blight that Red Mountain is causing and all that. It's basically a, a Messiah story, you know. But uh, anyway, let me see here. Uh, anyway, this is also important. The dissident priests do not reject mysticism, revelation, prophecies. The dissident priests have no. That's not it. Uh, Basically, the, the dissident priests don't hate the uh, tribunal, you know. Uh, they are, they're, they're with them, but they just don't agree with how secret and scummy it is, you know. Joel, it's Nervarine, not Nevarine. I don't say that. Do I? <laughs> anyway, uh, it's basically that, that the Vive Vivek is just holding too much of an iron grip on and everything and they they wish they could just unify instead of you know the contradictory stories on the in-game thing if you play Daggerfall they explain what the Namidium is active reality collapses temporarily in an event called a dragon break and every possibility becomes true when it turns off so all the conflicting accounts are likely true uh, the interesting you bring that up because in Daggerfall all the endings are canon all of them a and in later games there's a book called a warp in the west and I believe warp in the west is in this game too it's really confusing I'm not gonna tell you exactly what the Namidium is and what's going on in this game, but I can say this: giant robots. All right. If you think if you think Messiah stories and Godhood is crazy, you're gonna see giant robots. Do we find out what happened to the Dwemer? No, we don't. You can you can you can you ask one of the last dwarfs in this game what happened to them, and he's like, "Fuck if I know." Uh, but yeah, the, the the dwarves in in all of Elder Scrolls they fucked themselves out of existence over this this whole uh, discovery that they found, and they uh, you know something in Skyrim gives a bit of a hint. But I didn't play too much of Skyrim, so yeah. Let's see if there's any more books here I can uh, read here that will be uh, of particular interest. Uh, I guess I can read the real Nerevar. Well, this this one is just about the uni unification of the various tribes here. Um, and this was his ring that he uh, he's just wearing to unite everybody. Which you find the ring later on to confirm you, you are the guy, essentially. Let's see if there's anything else I missed here that could be of real... Because I don't want to be sending the whole uh, stream reading when I can just summarize it in a better way. Uh, but if you're interested in this lore, I highly recommend you check out the the various wiki pages and stuff like that. There's tons on this game. And I'm doing a really piss poor job explaining everything. But trust me, it, this, is, this shit goes deep and I encourage you to find out everything yourself i said this last cut but what i never got was that you know um dagoth ur nervor told them protect you know i'm gonna leave these tools here protect them don't fuck them up right and he's been waiting for me ever since dagoth ur wasn't initially like a bad guy but i never got the part where he started turning people into elephants and zombies and shit like that like because Dagoth Earth's motive in this game is essentially to, like, tell the Empire, the Imperials, to fuck off from Morrowind. He wants this place to be, you know, traditions and crap like that. And, you know, when, when uh, Imperials and everybody's, you know, building cities, he's like, no, 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 no. I guess he's just crazy, which is, I hate that kind of, like, motive. But, uh, you know, he's... Uh, He's uh, turning people into zombies and, and, and blight creatures, which is, you know... Uh, but he does have a, you know, motive that I can't talk too much about because it would spoil a little bit more later, but... Um, anyway, let's uh, let's get ready here. Hierogryph are collected priest writings in the temple. The Apocrypha are hidden writings, secrets only at the highest level priest and inquisition. To find the temple, we have gathered as much of the Apocrypha as we have more, blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lost Prophecy, here we go. And this is Ashlander stuff. And really, I need to convince everybody on Morrowind that I really am the Nervarine, right? And that's going to take a lot of time to do. But it's a bit of a fetch quest thing, but, you know. Once I... Because here's the thing. To defeat Dagoth Ur in the prophecy, I have to unite all the clans and houses. And all the clans and houses have kind of different names for the Nervarine. 
Anyway, I'll at least read this. From seventh sign, this eleventh generation, neither hound nor guar, nor seed nor harrow, but dragonborn and far star marked. Outlander incarnate beneath Red Mountain. Blessed guest encounters seven curses. Star blessed hand wields thrice cursed blade to reap the harvest of the unmourned house. I've an annotated your copy of the Lost Prophecy with our best efforts our interpretation, but a rough summary might be an outlander, foreign born, but welcome as a guest, confronts seven curses beneath Red Mountain. His hand, blessed by Azura, uses a cursed blade to bring justice to House Dagoth or House Dwemer or both. The Neverine, an outlander? That wouldn't place many outlanders and may explain how the prophecy got lost. Hmm, well, I'm a Nord, so hmm, I wonder how that aligns. Oh, wait. And now you have to find said blade, right? Yep. You guys want a little little hint on what the blade is? I'm not gonna spell say too much, but uh mm, mm, anyway, um let's see here. Uh, the seven curses, here we go. Through the doors of the unmourned house, where scoffers scoff and the schemers scheme, from the halls of the oath breaking house, ring seven curses of Goss blasphemed. First cursed, curse of fire, second curse, curse of ash, curse of flesh, ghost, sea, despair, and dreams. Your copy of the seven curses have have bears or guesses at interpreting the verses in short form. Seven curses come from House Dagoth or Cursed Wemmer or both. Fire and ash come from Red Mountain. Flesh is corpus. Ghost, seed, and despair are unclear, but Curse of Dreams seems to refer to some recent case of soul sickness and sleep attacks in the towns. And of course, the sixth house is, of course, Dagoth Ur's house. This is a new threat, and not yet, yet widely recognized as another face of the devil Dagoth Ur, but it's clearly a sign of a coming crisis, and the temple may no longer be able to protect Morrowind. In such troubled times, the Donmar may turn to the ancient pillars of faith, the ancestors and the Daedra, and especially to the prophetic visions granted by Lord Azura. Then they may look at the Nevarine, Saint Nerva reborn, to lead them against the grim armies of Dagoth Ur. He doesn't believe I'm the Nevarine. Well, again, because there's been a lot of Nevarines on Morrowind that claim I'm the one, and it just... Poops out. Let's talk to uh, Milo about this. What do you think of the persecution, Neverine? It's an Ashlander cult. Primitive superstition, says the temple. Neverine says the tribunal, the tribunal are false gods. I've never understood why the temple wastes so much energy to them. The faithful cannot be shaken by such attacks. And the temples and the Ashlanders are just ignorant savages. But since the submission of the temple to the Empire and the Kro and the Corrosion of faith among the Dunmer. The militant wing of the temple is increasingly fierce in its attack on heretics and heathens. Rian Arion, a monk at the docks outside, can arrange for travel back to Vivek. He can only enter or leave Holmayan at dusk and dawn. The entrance is sealed off at all other hours, but please make yourself comfortable here. Rest in our beds, make good use of our services. You may read our books, but don't take them. Do not abuse your hospitality. Do not take personal items or alchemic apparatuses or ingredients. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you, you might be able to save this entire island, but don't you dare take my soup. 